Business here is called Loon and Curious. We are three designers, um, myself, Brianna Lingham, um, and two colleagues, Polly George and Karu Parry, for, and her um, brand's called We Love Peru. And we are three designers that set up a shop um, to sell our own products and also to sell new designers, um, lots of local artists. We've been here at this location on Calvert Avenue since February 2011. And we've been going since uh, June 2006 and we were on Brick Lane before that. The, the, we have the view of Calvert Avenue and um, the street is still changing. It's, it is becoming much more gentrified. People are coming to this street because of, of the shops that are here and new shops opening up. So there is definitely sort of, it's, it's becoming sort of more on profile, um, I suppose, in London. And there has been a, a little flout of uh, um, programmes about it, lots of, you know, a few BBC documentaries about Arnold Circus. And so it is, people are becoming much more aware of this little sort of oasis in Shoreditch that's a little bit quiet. Over seeing it over probably the last really I suppose 10 years that uh, I've been coming to the East End and, and six years of running a business in the East End it's it's changing and you you sometimes think oh that's it it's changed but then it's still there's still more and coming and you know we hear constantly rumours all the time about massive um, fashion brands coming to this area and again until they're actually there and the doors are open you know, that sometimes these, these rumours are banded around to inflate the prices of the rent. rent. And there is, there is a real um, fear about that, for, and that's what happens. But it happens everywhere, in every part of the city. And, you know, it happened in Notting Hill years ago, and, and now we're seeing it happen in Shoreditch. And, and now, so you, you've seen in the last, you know, whereas everyone's sort of hung up in Whitechapel and Brick, Brick Lane, you know, the artists, now it's moved further up, they're all in Dalston and Clapton. And it's that was happening the same there. It will move. It will move. It will move. And it will just go circular. The whole banking crisis has really put everyone back into tracks, made them reevaluate what they value in life, whether that's you know people, your family, where you live, what your lifestyle choices are much more um, considered um, because money people realise that money can't solve everything. But then also, I think people's awareness of of Britain I suppose and, and Britain's manufacture and you know there's people when when people are out of jobs and because Britain's manufacturing industry is declining you know when they can suddenly put something back into place and, and start producing in this country again and be much more um, sustainable in their own their economy is much more sustainable and under our own control I think people do assess that because we sell products that have a story behind them that are handmade by a designer, the recession in a way has been quite good for us because it's made people really evaluate what they buy, why they buy it, how, what quality it is, where it's come from in the world, how long it will last. And if you've got a, a small amount of money, you know, we really spend that money wisely. The one thing I have noticed that people, well, I'm kind of guessing, that people still spend loads of money on going out like in the pub, going out for dinner, and that seems like a very separate thing. Whereas people say, "Oh, I can't buy, possibly buy that piece of jewellery," but then they'd go and spend maybe you know half that amount of money just going out for a meal, maybe once every week or something. But I don't really know about the Olympics. So it's um, I don't know what's going to happen. You're just going to have to go through it. No one can predict. You know, maybe if you're a massive corporate um, you know thing and you've got this big plan about what's going to do and who you're, you've invited people and that you're hosting something. But in terms of small independence, it's just going to be who's going to be here. And the tourists, they might stay in the big sort of doing the big landmarks, doing the London Eye, doing all the, you know, the, the things of London that are really obvious. So I just don't know. You know, it might be like be another O2 and it was dead for a few years, but then it might be something that regenerates and... I think London evolves, every city, every city in the world evolves constantly and, and you can't predict that evolution, it just has to flow.